okay, it's like the third time that I've tried to record this. The battery keeps dying. I hope everybody's doing well. Um, I hope you've listened to the audio for part one of chapter two. And if you are still finding it difficult, I suggest that you read the chapter more than once and listen to the audio more than once. Um, try not to make it harder than it is. It's really not that hard. Um, if you are looking at a name like Charles David, this is first and last name. This is a bad example here because I'm going to use this for cross-referencing. But you take the last name, okay, you underline it. That's your key unit. Always the last name. Draw a diagonal between the two and then number the, the next one, number two. If he had the middle initial, it would be three. Okay, so then on your um, self-checks, it's got key unit, which would be David. Unit two would be Charles. So trust me when I tell you to write it out this way, underline it, put your diagonals, you won't have any problem filling in your key units and the rest of your units. Okay? Now on page 45, I'm going to start cross-referencing. And um, this is not difficult either. Okay? So try not to make it that way. <laughs> um, but the, the main thing to remember here is that, just like it says in the book, um, on page 45, some names and businesses may be requested by names other than the ones in which they're stored. Okay? Good example would be if, well, my name is Paula Parrish. Say I had a business, Parrish's Office Supplies. Okay, so they name me by Paula Parrish, but I also have a business name. So then they need to cross-reference my files so that if someone is looking for me and they're not sure how to find me, but they go to Parrish's Computer Supplies, then it will have a cross-reference to see Paula Parrish. So they go to the P's for Parrish's and find me. Okay, so that's basically what cross-referencing is. Um, however, you don't need to do too many cross-referencing and make it um, uh, overwhelming. Okay, so you have to be very careful about how you do it. Okay, it also talks about um, what the cross-reference is. Okay, um, now read this where it says a cross-reference shows the name in a form other than that used on the original record and it indicates the storage location of the original record. Okay, so then it's able to, you're able to find either Paula Parrish or Parrish's computer supplies, either way. So, um, the second paragraph. Both the filing segment used to determine the storage location for the record and the cross-reference notation are coded on the document. So if you look at figure 2.4 in your book, okay, Star Financial Services is the company name, okay? And if you look down here, they've got Star Insurance also noted as a cross-reference. So looking under either one of these, we should be able to find who we're looking for. Okay, um, third paragraph talks about too many references, cross references can crowd the files and hinder retrieval. Um, we, so we don't want to do that. And then the last paragraph talks about you don't really need to use cross references in a database because a computer can search anything based off of anything you put in there. So if you type a P, then an A, then an R, it's going to look at Parrish and then determine that further. Is it you're looking for Parrish's computer supplies or Parrish, comma, Paula? So you really don't need to use that um, in a database. Go over to page 46. Um, this just talks about the different types of personal names that need to be cross-referenced, and that's the ones we're going to cover. Uh, unusual names, hyphenated, alternate, and similar names. And then there's a couple of business names that we're going to cover, compound, abbreviations, and acronyms. So look at personal names and number one, unusual or easily confused names like Charles David. Um, 
You may not know which one is his first name, which one is his last name by looking at it. So let's read this paragraph. When determining the last name or surname, and it's difficult, use the last name written as the key unit on the original record. Prepare a cross-reference with the first name written as the key unit. On the original correspondence for Charles David, David, the last name, is the key unit, and Charles is the first name, which is the second unit, just like I've got here. Here's your key unit and your unit two. That's the original correspondence or the original document. And this is his name right here, okay? In a correspondence file, the cross-reference sheet would show I'm sorry, let me back up. However, a request might be made for David Charles. So someone might be thinking of Charles David, but they say David Charles. So when you go to the filing cabinet and you're looking for uh, David Charles, you can't find him. If you look in course documents, there's a cross-reference form. And depending on the office environment that you work in, <coughs> you they may use a cross-reference form like this right here, which is placed in the front of the filing cabinet and, has, and it lists all the cross-references. It could be placed in front of each folder in the filing cabinet. So if there's any cross-references for C or D, it would be placed there. Okay? This is kind of my filing cabinet right here. I've got A, B, C, D, E. Okay? Here is a place to put the cross-reference form for all of these in this filing cabinet, or you can just put it in front of each folder. It really depends on the office. So, <clears throat> if someone makes a request for David Charles, okay, in a correspondence file, the cross-reference sheet would show Charles as the key unit and David as the second. So you see here, I'm cross-referencing it now Charles is going to be the key unit, and David is going to be unit two. All right, so, <clears throat> so if now if we do it this way, if someone looks under the C's, okay, and they see Charles, and I've got a cross-reference, and I've got on my sheet here, you go to Charles David, to see David Charles. So I'm going to go over here to my filing cabinet and I don't know how well you can see this. I've got two files under C right here. Charles and Chastity. Here's Charles right here. If I pull Charles out of that filing cabinet I see it's got a cross reference to C David Charles. So then I go to D and there's David filed by the last name, David, okay? And then I can also see in there that there is a cross-reference for C, Charles, David. So then I know that it's going to be in one of the other places because this is an unusual name, okay? So if you look at your book at the bottom of page 46, it's got Charles, David, just like I have here. We've got David underlined because it's the last name. Draw the diagonals. Put your two, unit two. Okay? Now look over to the right. It's got Charles underlined, diagonal, David. And then David is unit two in this part. And then right underneath that, you're going to put C, the original David Charles. Okay, because David, remember, this is what we're filing it under, the last name. Um, if this wasn't a name, say it was um, a, um, a diner, okay, um, then we know we file diners under the D. Same thing with David. This is their, his last name, not his first name, okay. Charles David. This is the last name. We underline it. Unit 2. Divide it. So if we cross-reference it and just flip it, crisscross it, okay, 
then we're going to have to put a cross reference for Charles, file this under the C's, and put a cross reference of C. David Charles. So if we go to C looking for Charles and we can't find Charles David, okay, then we're going to see it here that we know to go to the D's and we'll find who we're looking for. Look at the second example and these names, they put them in here really unusual, um, not to confuse you, but because they are unusual names and that's the purpose or the meaning behind cross-referencing. <coughs> So, Ji Hong Chung, okay? So, what's his last name? Chung. So, you're going to underline Chung, put a diagonal between the first and the last name, and put a 2 over Ji Hong, which is his first name, which will be Unit 2. Now, look at the cross-reference to the right, okay? This time you're going to underline his first name because you don't know if it's a first or a last name. And you're going to file it under the G's. But on your cross reference underneath it, you're going to put C Chung G Hong. Okay? So I hope that makes sense. If not, you just have to keep reading it and reading it and reading it and it will finally click. Okay? The second one is hyphenated names, and that's really not hard either. And let's see if I can um, put this up here for you. <coughs> Excuse me, I have sinuses and I feel like I have a cold. <coughs> so I really apologize. <coughs> okay, for hyphenated names, this is most of the time for women that have remarried and they keep their middle name, I mean, I'm sorry, their last name, and then add on their married name, and they usually do that with a hyphen. Um, for instance, my um, maiden name is Webb, so Webb Parish, okay, with a hyphen. Okay, and your book here is talking about Wendy Reardon Bruss, okay, and um, hyphenated names um, are basically you can request the records could be either of two surnames. So a cross reference enables retrieval in either case. An example in Weirdy, Wendy Reardon Bruss here. If you look at, um, okay, I'm going to write her name Wendy Reardon Bruss. Okay, her last name is Reardon Bruss. Underline it, it's a key unit. Draw a diagonal, put a two. Unit two is Wendy, okay? Now, if <clears throat> we want to cross-reference it, then we need to, because we, need, we don't use any punctuation, okay? We're gonna do Bruss, Wendy, Reardon. Okay, and you're going to underline Bruss and then draw your diagonals. You've got two and three. So now we're going to file it under the B's Bruss, Wendy Reardon. So then you would have to see Reardon Bruss under the R's. with no punctuation, Wendy. Just think of it like that, Reardon Bruss, comma, Wendy, but of course you don't put any punctuation. So, um, <clears throat> you've got Wendy, Reardon Bruss, Reardon Bruss is her last name, you're going to underline it, diagonal, put a two over Wendy, that's your unit two. Cross-reference it to her last, um, married name. So if it was me, it would be Parish. Okay. Then you go in order. So we've got, um, so if you look at these two here, right here, we got Bruss. Okay. Then we go right down to the next one. Bruss, 
Wendy Weirden. Bruss Wendy Weirden. You see that? Bruss Wendy Weirden. So you have to go left to right. So when you do it that way. So because this is a hyphenated name, again, this is her real name, Wendy Weirden Bruss. And we're going to cross reference her to her married name, Bruss. Okay. And then in that file, we're going to put a cross reference sheet, C. Reardon Bruss, to find Wendy. Okay. I hope that makes sense. You can play this again and again and again if you need to. Um, hopefully, um, this makes sense to you. Uh, I've also put an announcement in Blackboard if anybody wants any tutoring that is available, so check uh, Blackboard for that. <clears throat> okay, the next one on page 47 is alternate names, and um, this is the one that I was kind of giving you an example of myself if I had a business name. Okay, so let's look at the first one here, uh, Michelle Starr. Okay, so what's her last name? Star. We're going to underline star. So that's the key unit. Draw a diagonal. Unit 2 is Michelle. Okay? So um, <clears throat> let's read this paragraph here on number 3. When a person is known by more than one name, you need to make cross references. Two examples are below. So, Michelle Starkinski is doing business as Michelle Star and Faith Morin, who is also known as some three different people there. So, anytime you have someone that has more than that's known by more than one name, you have to do a cross reference for each one. Okay. So first of all, let's look at Michelle Starr. Okay. Um, actually, she is, um, her name is M Michelle Starskinski. Just love these names. I'm just going to say Starsky. How about that? All right. So that's really her name right there. And... Um, but she's doing business as Michelle Starr, okay? So, Michelle Starsky is doing business as Michelle Starr. So, Michelle Starr, we've got that up here. We've got Starr underline. Michelle uh, is unit two. So, we're going to do a, a cross-reference here then for Starsky. Because we always file by the last name, Michelle. Okay, so that is going to be your key unit right there. And then you're going to see who. Who do we file this by? Star. So, Star Michelle. So, if you think about it like this, that Let's say we just left off the first name, okay? Let's say we just left off the first name. And we're, we're going to file Starsky and Star, okay? Um, so that's, that's kind of what you're looking at here is how to file it. And if you can't find it under Starsky, then you can go to Star or vice versa, okay? So you're basically crisscrossing them, cross-referencing, okay? So, Michelle Starsky is doing business as Michelle Starr, okay? So, in order to find Michelle Starsky, we're going to have to do a cross-reference for Starsky. And then, if we go into the S's, so we got an S up here, and there's a Starsky there. But I'm looking at Michelle Starr, there's going to be a cross-reference that says C, Star Michelle. Like that. Which don't want to be any punctuation. So 
This is for um, alternate names. People that's doing business by more than one name. If you look at Faith Morin, she's doing, <clears throat> she's got three different names. She's known as Faith Morin Ripley, which is a hyphenated name. Mrs. Michael Ripley, her husband's name. And